thanks for checking out my video on how to do light boxes. This is the first video and many to come. Uh, today we're just going to work on a basic black and white light box. Nothing special, no fancy colors, anything like that. Um, there's a couple of videos on YouTube that I've learned off of. Uh, none of them are wrong, they're all right, and that's just how the creator likes to do it in their own way. All that matters is you have fun and you enjoy what you do. So with that, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, we're going to simply turn this little controller into a light box. Just basic controller, nothing fancy. So this is just a PNG file that I grabbed off the internet. And what we need to do in order for Fusion to read this right, we actually need to turn this into an SVG. So I like to use a website called PNG to SVG. And what we'll do is we'll go over here to drop, drag and drop file. And we'll take our file and drag it right into there. By default on this website, it does like to add five colors, so we'll have to take that down to one and hit generate. That is now our SVG file. Download SVG, and we're all set with the internet. So we can go ahead and open up Fusion and go ahead and do the front. So we're all working on the front face, and we'll do create sketch. What we're gonna do is create a replica of our build plate on our bamboo printer. Let's go ahead and do rectangle and we're going to do 250 by 250. This is all in millimeters, by the way. All right. And now what we want to do is essentially create a safe space for us to work in inside the 250. So we want to double click and hit O for offset and do 10 millimeters. This is going to add, make a 240 millimeter square that we are essentially is our safe space to size up our image. Once done, hit finish sketch. We're going to go over here to insert and we're going to do insert SVG. Insert from my computer. And that website likes to do image to vector. So you can see I have a lot of them. And we're going to do number 29 since that's our most recent. Hit open. You do not want to click on any of these squares when importing the SVG because it will attach it to that sketch. So what I like to do is click outside the square and it will place my image. From here, we can move it around by clicking and holding the square, and we can resize it. So you want to resize accordingly to what you like. I'm going to fit mine to the square, and that's perfect. So we can hit OK and finish sketch. Now we want to turn off our safe zone since we don't need that anymore. So sketch one is turned off by clicking the I, and we have just our controller. From here, we're going to want to create um, three offsets from here. So double click anywhere on the image, on the out border of the image, and it's going to create a dark blue line. Click O on your keyboard for offset, and you can notice that it's missing here. That happens with some images, so go ahead and hit escape on your keyboard, and you just want to double click again anywhere where it's missing and hit O on the keyboard for offset, and you can see it rejoin that line. I like to do my first offset anywhere from 2.5 millimeters to 3.5 millimeters. It all depends on the image. So this one, let's try 2.5. That looks great. That's a nice distance from the image and we can get some nice color through there. Let's go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard. You'll know what's right when you can highlight the offset versus the controller or your image. Double click on it again, hit O on the keyboard. And for the second one, I like anywhere between 5.5 and 7.5. So let's go ahead and try 5.5. Yeah, that looks good. That's about equal to the other one. And hit enter on the keyboard. So you can see this did not separate like the first one did. It's not good. So what we're gonna wanna do is look on the image for the white dot. That kinda is our representation of somewhere, somewhere where it's not connected right or something along that lines. So we notice the white dot right here. So we can either delete this line or this line. This one looks a little bit easier to recreate. So we'll go up here to trim and click it. That will delete that line. Now what we're gonna wanna do is create the fit point spline. And over here, what I like to do is turn off snap and that kinda eliminates some things. That's just a personal preference and constraints. All right, so now Let's go ahead and create our line. We create it with the spline. It does add a little bit of a curve, curve. So that's really nice when we're going to create these. 
and you'll get this box. Go ahead and click it. And once we're done and everything's connected, hit enter on the keyboard. As you can see, it's now separated just like the other offset. All right, last offset. So same thing, double click on the line. O on the keyboard. And this one, it's between 9.5 and 10.5. So let's try 9.5. That's a little big. So let's actually try nine. That's great. That looks great, kind of matches the other's distance. Perfect, hit okay and hit finish sketch. Now everything's separated. Perfect. All right, what we want to do is select our whole image. So drag and select. Hit E on the keyboard for extrude. And you want to train, change the start from profile plane to offset. Let's change the offset to negative 36. And change the different distance to two millimeters. And operation to new component. Hit OK. You should get just this basic two millimeter extruded image and it automatically hide sketch too so we want to re-enable it and now we want to do is click on our most outer offset once that's selected just like that hit e on our keyboard and select our back image that we just created that uh, encloses the difference and it adds the depth to the box that we need perfect and now what we'll do is make sure that's on join and hit OK. So now we have the back part of our light box. It should look just like this. So what I like to do is rename component one to back. Perfect. Now we need to color the rest of the controller. So what I like to do is hide the back. So we're just left with just the sketch. And what we're going to do is go ahead and select the parts that we want to be black. So I'm going to select the, the most top offset, the middle offset, and the controller. What I like to do is uh, make this outer line white. Kind of adds a separation so you can really tell what the image is. And so what we're going to do is once we have all the parts we want black selected, hit E on our keyboard, and we're going to extrude by negative 1. So that's going to make it towards the back, and negative 1 is not going to let any light shine through. And we want to make sure the operation is new component and hit OK. We'll name this to black. Now before we continue coloring, what I want to do is add the lip to the light box that this front part is going to sit into the back part. So we're going to select the middle offset, hit E on the keyboard, and do negative 5. It will automatically try to cut it, and you want to change operation to join, and hit OK. And now you can see the lip is added. I'll hide sketch two so you can see that. You can see a lot better now. And what happens is the back is just gonna sit right on there, as you can see here. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and re-enable sketch two. From here, I'll select all the item, all the objects I wanna be white. So I'll click and hold shift and select everything that I want to be white or a different color. Perfect. So I'll hit E on the keyboard for extrude, and this is gonna be negative 0.6. This will allow the light to shine through very nice. And we're gonna do operation, new component, and we're gonna name this white. Perfect. You can go ahead and hide the sketch now, and you can see everything looks good. Should look just like a flat image when you're face, looking at it face on. We'll go ahead and re-enable the back. So there's our light box. Now, what I like to do is color it in Fusion so I kind of get an idea if I'm missing anything or how it looks. So we'll go ahead and move this off to the side. Hit A for the appearance window. And I like to do ABS, just a personal preference. So what we'll do is take ABS and drag it to end this design. Go edit, and we can change the color of what we want it to be. So I'll go ahead and make it white and hit okay. And then I can drag this white color to our white component and boom that's white and now i can duplicate it so duplicate edit and i can make this black and drag that to whatever i want to be black so black and back perfect and as you can see our light box is semi-complete we're only missing one step 
and you can change the colors to whatever you're doing and whatever your project requires. So once you're done with the coloring, hit close. And what we're going to do is go to the back side of the light box and we're going to hit create sketch. All right, with the back side, what I like to do is put it somewhere that's towards the bottom. So like down here on the controller, rather than up here where you would see the cord come through. So we're going to click on the controller to make it blue, hit rectangle, and we're going to select where we want the LEDs to come in at. So I know my LED strips are 2.5 by 10.5. I know my LEDs will fit through that hole very nicely and it's not going to be a giant cutout. Once done, we can hit finish sketch and we'll have our sketch right here. Click on it and hit E for extrude and we're going to do negative five and we want to make sure it's on cut. This is going to add a hole. You can do it on the side, on the back, whatever you prefer, whatever fits your project you know, however makes it look nice and whatever you like. That's the thing about it. You can customize this to whatever you prefer. I just like them coming out the back. Either side is perfect. All right. And now we're all set and ready to import into Bamboo Slicer. So to export, we go to unsaved, go to export. So we right click on unsaved to export. And then what we'll do is step and we'll name this game step. So I have game and step. It kind of helps me put step in the name of the folder or file just because it's quicker to see that than the actual file extension. So I'll hit export. It's going to go to my downloads and it's already there, but I'll hit yes. And then what I'm going to do is right click on it again and export. And I like to make a fusion backup. So fusion file, it's a F3D and I'm going to name it game. And then same thing like step, I do fusion. So I know this is the fusion file just by looking at the name and hit export. So now we have a fusion file we can reopen and re modify in the future. And we have the step file that we import into bamboo slicer. So now we're going to open up bamboo studios. I'm going to a new project. Here we have what you normally see in bamboo slicer, our build plate. So what I like to do is create two build plates, one and two. One's going to be for the front and one's going to be for the back. So what we're going to do is take our step file and drag it over here. Now that we have our step file there and we make sure it's all sized up, we size it the first one how we want it. We're going to simply copy it and then paste it. And we're going to paste it on the plate number two. I always size plate one and then copy it and put it on plate two. So what we're going to do for plate two, is we go over here to objects and we're going to delete everything but the back. And now we just have our back image. So that will print just the back and we can color it to three. Change filament or hit three on your keyboard. And now we still have it on the front on the plate one. So what we're going to do is go over here and delete back and then we're going to do face lay on face and we're going to choose the front. So it's going to lay it down face down for the texture build plate and we're going to choose the top number one, uh, the top filament to black and then change white to white. And there we go. And then you can simply slice it and you're all set. And what you can do too, is if you notice that the depth of your box is too big or too far, uh, too much, and you want it to be slimmer, you can actually click on it and you're gonna go up here to cut and you can resize it to what you want. And you uncheck upper part and then you cut it down and that makes it smaller. So if you're using like one small thing of LEDs and you don't want it to be very deep, uh, in size, you can cut it that way, which I've had somewhere I've only done like a three foot LED strip and it's enough to go around it once. And most of my boxes, I do nine feet of LEDs. Uh, that's just how they come. So I keep it about 34 millimeters um, depth. So yeah, you're all set with that and you would slice and print. Uh, thank you guys for checking out my video. I'm trying to make it short and quick and to the point. Uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, check out the new videos we have coming on more in depth light boxes, keychains, 
um, or we'll be making like magnets and things like that. So I appreciate it, guys. And until next time.